If I had to pick one UI framework that is most likely to give you long-term success, that would have to be Next.js. And if I had to pick one CSS framework, that would have to be Tailwind CSS because that is what pretty much every startup is using nowadays. So in this lesson, we will create a new Next.js project and I will show you how you can add Tailwind CSS to it. So let's go. Creating a new Next.js project is pretty easy. You can pretty much create a new one running npx create next app, giving the name of the application that you want and we're calling this demo next tailwind and we are going to be using the TypeScript template. Now there are lots of other templates as well and one of them does indeed come with tailwind but that template doesn't use TypeScript. Plus starting with the TypeScript template and then adding tailwind gives you a starting point for adding tailwind into your existing Next.js project as well. Once create next app has created our project, we are pretty much good to go and we can start adding Tailwind. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about the create next app TypeScript template, I already have a lesson on that where I walk you through the code base and show you how you can add different pages as well as different API endpoints. And I will leave a link to that in the video description. Now there are three NPM packages that we need to install in order to start using Tailwind. We will save them all as dev dependencies, specifying minus D, and the first project is Tailwind CSS, which is no surprise. And the second one is Post CSS. Tailwind fundamentally works as a Post CSS plugin. And the other plugin that we will need is the Auto Prefixer plugin, which is also a very famous plugin for Post CSS. Now with the installation out of the way, the next thing that we have to do is we are going to use the Tailwind CSS installed package to initialize a new Tailwind CSS project. This creates two configuration files, one for configuring postcss using postcss.config.js and one for configuring tailwind with tailwind.config.js. The postcss.config.js file is pretty basic and we don't need to modify it in any shape or form. Fundamentally, Next.js already supports postcss and it will automatically pick up this postcss.config.js file and this file is specifying that we are going to be using the auto prefixer plugin as well as the tailwind CSS plugin. The tailwind config.js file is also pretty basic and we don't exactly need to modify anything other than the content path. For Next.js projects, all the source code will be located under the pages folder and it's not unconventional to also put components into the components folder. And that's what we're going to specify and we are going to be including all JS, JSX, TS, TSX files. Now one final piece of configuration that we have to do is to include the styles that tailwind is going to generate for us. Now we're going to do that in our globals.css file and we're going to delete everything that the Next.js template created but if there is something of value in your globals.css feel free to leave that in. Now there are three Tailwind directives which are base components and utilities in order for Tailwind to do its magic. And that's it for the configuration. Fundamentally Next.js will pick up postcss.config.js which will then pick up tailwind.config.js and then Tailwind will look at its configuration, look at all the JS, JSX, TS, CSX files and then expand this globals.css into what it needs for those styles to work. Now let's do some basic application development to demo how working with Tailwind is going to feel like. We open up our index.tsx page, delete the default template that's already there and replace it with a very simple homepage that currently returns nothing. The fundamental way that you use Tailwind is by using CSS class names within your components. So we add an h1 and we add a bunch of classes to it which are text3xl, font bold, as well as underline. And these CSS classes that are provided by Tailwind are just simple abstractions on top of CSS for a particular design system. For example, text3xl is just an abstraction over font size and line height, font bold is just an abstraction over font weight, and underline is just an abstraction over the underlying CSS property. Now there are two key advantages of using this system. First, you don't end up with random values, so you don't have text 24px and text 23px flying around. It's going to be text 3 extra large and that's based on a scale on a design system. The second advantage is that it's going to result in much more readable code. For example, it's very clear to see that it's going to be a bold font with an underline and you don't even need to actually understand the underlying CSS if you don't care about that. The rest of your development workflow is going to be your standard Next.js workflow. We start this template by running npm run dev and we can visit localhost 3000 to see this application in action and we can jump back to our code and add other class names for example text center to add text align center to this particular h1 and with that the application will get automatically recompiled by the next.js dev server and when we jump into the browser you can see that the text is now center aligned. 
Now one thing that might be bothering you is the use of these CSS class names within our HTML. Well, if you're working with the framework, for example, in this case we are working with React, it's quite easy to take this HTML and move it into a component, for example an H1 component, and you can add any props to it that you want, and now this reusable CSS class name set is something that is automatically provided by this H1 component, and I would argue that seeing the class names over here is much more convenient than having to jump to a CSS file separately to see what are the styles for this particular H1. So as you can see, it is pretty easy to add Tailwind CSS to your Next.js project or pretty much any project out there because fundamentally, Tailwind is just a post CSS plugin and post CSS is something that is ubiquitously supported by pretty much any build toolchain out there. Additionally, we looked at how easy it is to create a design using Tailwind CSS utility classes and I'm looking forward to sharing more design tips using CSS utility classes instead of verbose CSS values. With that said, smash that like and subscribe, turn your thoughts into comments and I will see you in the next one.